Let's go to Starboard now. Of course, the activist fund run by Jeff Smith. Uh, called Jeff this morning. He did not return my call. They're figuring in a couple of different things. The first is Papa John's, of course, which we've kind of covered here and there. Billion two company uh, has had uh, a, a lot of controversy. With right. Its still 31% owner shatter, but um, he comes in. That is Jeff Smith and Starboard with significant investment in terms of a prefer or a convertible, I should say. And you can see the stock is reacting positively. Uh, Jim, all I've got there is that it's not about cutting costs. It's about re-engineering a path to growth. Well, I'll tell you, you, this really does clarify who's running the company. I think there's a lot of people who we're thinking is Schneider going to get by the, the deposed CEO. Uh, it's very positive for them. But remember, they've taken a step back versus Domino's and even Pizza Hut. The turmoil has hurt them. I'm not a customer, of, well, of any of the chains, frankly, given well, that we live in New York, where we Domino's. have the greatest pizza in the world, I think. So yeah, I, my wife is making pizzas again on Friday night. Uh, is she I, getting I, any good at it? You know, it's the problem with making a pizza, really boutique pizzas. It takes a little more than you realize. So you need a little bit more help. Mm -hmm. uh, and you really have to have a franchise model. And my wife's restaurant with a friend Michelle's not franchise. Got it. It's okay. very much. But I can expect a very good meal when I go. Oh, my. Oh, I think best in Brooklyn, but it's not really. We haven't had David Portnoy. Ooh, a little controversial there. We haven't had Barstool's One Bite come and verify yet our little pizzas. Got but it. We've got some good reviews. Um, on Starboard, another um, stock that it is having an impact on potentially is this Bloomberg report that Starboard took a stake in Bristol this Myers. This is so big. I'm glad you. This now, is so big. Well, you know, again, uh, Mr. Smith has not returned calls. What I can tell you is a couple of things here. Uh, remember, we've talked about this, the, the large spread in this deal between, of course, the price. It's 50 bucks uh, in cash and one share of right. Bristol Myers, sell gene trading below that, the so-called spread. Now, there's not nearly as much money in event strategies, for lack of a better term, than as there was previously. And so you simply don't have as many uh, funds attacking that spread. But it has stayed large in part because of this continued enduring belief that, well, will somebody come along and try to get the deal voted down? Is it possible that there'd be a bid for Bristol-Myers? I've heard nothing on either front, though Bloomberg reports Starboard is in there. Now, I will tell you, the company has not heard from Starboard. So I can at least the share company that. has not. No. So there's been no conversations. So far, the, not, Mr. Uh, Dr. A lot of people are focused hurt. on the fact that the nominating window closed for the board. But frankly, the annual meeting would be after the vote. OK. So that's not as important. Um, Starboard is, you know, it's a large activist fund, but it's not that big. It's no, taking on, Bristol's my God, 81. it's got so many different things going on to take a significant stake yeah. uh, uh, where they would actually argue against the deal. Uh, who knows? Remember, go back a couple of years, actually November of, I think it was seven, 16, uh, when Rockwell, was it 16 or 17, when Rockwell Collins um, UTX. and UTX, there was a story again that Starboard had taken a stake there and might argue against the deal. Nothing ever came okay, of it. Okay, well, David, I look at this. I, I, Dr. Ka, uh, Caporio, I think, has done a remarkable thing here. When you look at the Merck quarter, which is one of the best of the pharma, maybe the best of big pharma. Right. One Pfizer wasn't focus the on best, Friday but Pfizer was not bad. Yep. Uh, it's Keytruda. Keytruda is $5 billion. It's probably going to go to $10 billion. Probably the biggest drug ever. And that's against uh, Bristol-Myers drug, Updevo, and even with Juravoy. And it's been disappointing. There's a number of tests. And there's absolutely a chance that Updevo is going to win in some of these head-to-head, -head, but the street has turned against them. So what do they do? They, they look for a company that they can boost earnings with, that they believe that have something in the pipe, which is Celgene. A lot of people feel that Celgene is one product like AbbVie, and it's just all it is is multiple myeloma revlimid. So I like, you know, a lot of people feel these are two narrow companies. You've got Updevo not doing that well, and you've got Revlimid coming off patent. David, I think it's a great solution for Bristol Myers, because as Dr. Caforia would tell you, there's a fantastic pipe that you don't know about for Celgene. But David, people think it's bad for Bristol, and that's why everyone's so excited. I disagree with that. I know you do, uh, and there are many who who do think that they got a good buy here in terms of at least when they bought and the yes. multiple they paid for Celgene. The deal will be accretive right away. But yes, there are certainly many doubters. We said that at the time, day one, you and I were together. Yeah. I think I termed it in some ways two drunks holding each other up. So yes.